Well, welcome back, folks. Today we're going to move on with um, assembly of components to the project bike on the YL1, starting with this uh, rear brake lamp trigger assembly. This mounts into the end of the swing arm. Actually, it mounts like that. And then this switch is pulled by the rear brake rod, activated by the foot pedal to complete the circuit for the two wires that come in and out of this, uh, these two terminals to activate the brake lamp. So what we have to do is not only mount this to the swing arm, but we have to fish the uh, two wires, there's a brown and a yellow, into these little tiny holes you can see right there behind the springs. And the springs are what keeps tension you can see the holes right there, I think. The springs keep the tension on the wires. So this is a little bit finicky to do. I think the way I'm going to proceed with this, I've given a little thought, is I'm going to wedge this screwdriver, this small screwdriver in. Like that. You can see I've got the spring compressed on both sides, I think, there. And then I have the washer, there's a little washer right here. I have the washer on the outside, which I think is probably how it goes. Then I'm going to take this pair of, these are high, pretty high quality tweezers and they're self-closing. And I'm going to wedge those in like that. My intention here is to keep that spring compressed by the tweezers so I can fish that wire, one of the wires down through, and then just pull the tweezers out and allow the spring to retract, thereby clamping the wire, and I'll have to do that twice. Now the one off the bike, like I'm doing now, the first one is probably going to be the easy one. The second one I have to do with this dangling from one of the wires, and uh, so I'm anticipating the second one will be a little bit tougher. So let's move on over to the bike, and we'll reset up, and we'll see if we can't get this. We're going to go ahead now and attach the brake light switch, rear brake light switch to the uh, swing arm. I'll do my best to stay out of, keep my head out of your way. Here's the switch that we talked about a moment ago. And the switch does mount like this. And as I indicated, the first wire I think is going to be the easy one. And it doesn't make any difference which wire goes into which hole. And then we've got the first one in. Now the second one I think might be a little bit tougher. We'll see. Try to duplicate the process. That we just did. Make sure that the wires protrude all the way through, which they do. And now it's just a matter of inserting the assembly in the swing arm like that. And adding the screw little anti-seize.
and we just tighten it up. And just snug it down. Now the exact positioning of this arm and this linkage that eventually will attach to the brake rod I'll have to sort out here as we move on to installing the uh, brake pedal which is right here. This is a re-chrome. This is the original re-chromed brake pedal which will fit up in here. And again, we've got to work all this out. So I've got to give it a little thought and study it before we proceed on with the next part of the assembly. But at this point, at least the uh, brake light switch itself is in. Eventually, obviously, I'll have to test this to make sure it works, but I have no reason to believe it won't. As we move on to assembling the rest of the components to the rear brake hub, I think I'm going to start with the brake stay arm itself. That's right here. This is a used stay arm. This is the best of the two that I had. And I think you can tell it's been replated, re zinc plated, and polished. The rest of these parts are all new from Yamaha that I ordered through Partzilla. And you can see I've numbered them 32, 33, uh, 34, 35, etc. These are all the parts associated with installing this between the swing arm mount and the brake backing plate and rear wheel. And the reason I did this, this numbering, is I compared them to the parts, the Partzilla parts diagram I ordered them from originally just to make sure I had everything. And none of these have been opened yet, so we, uh, I haven't even gotten started with attempting to assemble it. So what I'm going to do now is go over to the bike and I'll reset up and I'll begin opening these parts and um, we'll mount the stay arm uh, on the back. So we're over at the bike. And here's that uh, parts diagram I referenced a moment ago where I uh, keyed the various part numbers to the diagram so I knew what was what. However, as I was looking over some of the parts preparing to move on to this next step, I noticed on the spring, number 35, and that's this part right here, something didn't look right. It, it piqued my interest, so I went back and dug out the, found the original spring that came off this machine, and it wasn't shaped anything like this. It was more of a, more of a cone-shaped spring, something like this. This is an exaggeration, and it was much shorter than this spring, and it wasn't nearly as stiff. So clearly they made a substitution here, Yamaha, even though this part number matches up with this part number. And though this spring may in fact, I could get it to work, uh, I'm not going to use this one. What I'm going to do is go back and use the original spring, which unfortunately I had not prepared before this. Um, it's dirty, it's cruddy, it's a little rusty. So I've got that soaking right now in rust remover and I have already bead blasted it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and complete the assembly without the spring and I'll have to come back after I've got the spring replated, re-zinc plated and add it back in, which I don't think is going to be uh, much, of a, much of an issue. I didn't want to really delay this whole assembly of the brake stay arm just because I had I hadn't had that spring um, prepared for this. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed without the spring and we'll come back and add it um, a little bit later. You can see the mounting point for the brake stay arm here. That's a brake backing plate. And then the attached uh, mounting point on the frame which was welded in at the factory. You can't put these on backwards because of the hole size here and here, this larger hole fits over the swing arm mount. The smaller hole right here is used for the back, brake backer plate itself. And this goes something like that. 
So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to mount this end using the new hardware. So let's go ahead and open up these bags. So this is all the hardware for the brake backer plate. So we have a new bolt. I think you can see that. And then this plate goes on like that. I'm just going to temporarily install it here. And then we have uh, a nut, a washer, and a clip that secures everything together here at this end. You notice I'm taking the parts out one at a time, which is typical for me. I don't like a lot of, a lot of loose parts floating around if I can avoid it. And I do save the bags because I go back to my database that I've shared with you before and update the bad database to reflect that I have used the parts. Just a little dab of anti-seize here, not a lot. I took the shock out of the way so that I didn't, uh, number one, have to work around it. And number two, you have a better view of what I'm doing. I'm going to go get a wrench now. That's one thing I failed to do is get the wrenches ready. I'm going to get a wrench ready and we'll just snug that up and then attach the clip. I have a 12 millimeter ratcheting wrench here. So I'm just going to snug that nut up. I'm not going to get it too tight right now because remember I'm going to have to come back later and put that spring on I just referenced so I'm going to leave it just a little loose. And the last thing I have to do is attach this little circlet. There's a hole here in the um, bolt. It's just a safety pin is all it is. Very small. There. Wipe off any excess NACs. And this end is pretty much done. Well, we got it attached here, so let's rotate the backer plate around because the, the arm goes on the bottom, actually. I install it uh, from the top side just because it's a little easier to record and to do. And now all I have to do is take the hardware. Again, keep in mind this uh, hardware is going to have to come back off to put that spring on we talked about a minute ago. So I'm going to put everything in place. including the split pin or cotter pin. I'm just going to put that through the hole like that just to keep everything in place so I know where it's at. One other thing that just occurred to me as I was rotating that, since I installed this assembly upside down, uh, this clip now, the safety pin is now upside down, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove that and put it right side up like it should be. Like that. So now that we have the brake stay arm or brake backer plate stay arm installed, we can go ahead and move on to the brake, uh, brake arm and brake pedal itself. So let's get on with installing this brake rod and brake pedal assembly. You can see the brake pedal here. I've generously wrapped it with uh, masking tape just to protect the chrome when I kind of bang around down here trying to install it. I've got all my parts laid out here that I think I'm going to need. I've got some grease for the shaft pivot right here for the brake rod. I've got a few tools. 
I'm going to work from the front backwards in installing these parts, and I have some uh, minor variations of uh, different parts that we're going to talk through as we work backwards. First thing I need to do, though, I can tell you is I need to move this pivot back into the frame so that I can fit the uh, brake rod or the brake pedal rather in. Otherwise, I can't quite get it in, as you can see there. So what I'm going to do is take a brass hammer with some uh, duct tape on it to protect the end of that rod. Tap that back. Now I'm going to take and use a little white lithium grease. You could use any grease for this. I'm just going to use white lithium for this uh, particular application and put a little grease in here like that. Put on a little lubrication. Tap it through on the opposite side. I can find it. You'll notice on the bottom, I don't know if you can see it from your perspective, but there's a walled in stop for the brake pedal on the bottom of the foot peg bar here. Comes up like that. As you can perhaps see right here, there's a hole in the top of the uh, brake pedal bar here, and that's where this bent end of the brake actuator rod fits through. It goes through that hole like that. First thing we have to do is attach this um, hardware assembly linkage for the uh, brake light because as this pedal is depressed like this, it'll pull this forward and activate the switch. There is a little cotter key, cotter pin, split pin that goes through the end of this rod. So it's a little tiny one. As you can see, I think, there. We'll see if we can't <clears throat> get that out of there and not lose it. Right there. And that goes through the end here once we've got everything put together here. This linkage coming down from the brake light switch got a little kink in it. And I believe that's just an offset to bring uh, everything in alignment. So we've got to bring, easier said than done, we've got to bring this brake pedal back. how it will work, like that. This is the, as you see here, this is the normal position for the brake pedal, which is up, pulling this back. There's a spring right here. This is the spring that connects here and goes back to the muffler, a muffler bracket, which obviously isn't in place right now. So I, I'm not going to be able to uh, pull this back. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap some tape around this to hold it in the back position. And once I get the pin in, if 
figure out the best way here to, to do that. In order to get this little tiny cotter pin or split pin in the hole in the end of that brake rod shaft, I think I'm going to tape the uh, brake pedal and it's normally retracted or up position. And I'm going to do that first, I think, here. So that's its normal home position right there. And now I'm going to see if I can get this little pin in the hole in the end of that rod. And I think I'm going to try to use forceps to do it. And it came through. I don't know if you can see it there. But it's right there. You probably can't see it from your perspective. There's the split pin right there. And now it's just a matter of separating. legs like that. So it can't go anywhere. So we've got the linkage for the brake light switch connected, the cotter pin in place. Now we're going to move back. Here's the arm that goes on the brake rod spindle camshaft right here. You can see, I think, that it's got a, a bit of a kink in it. I believe this goes like this, that is, this kink goes outward, you know, it goes something like that. I'm not going to put that on until later though, and here's the, the bolt and nut combination that goes with that. What I'm going to do next is mount the hardware on, on the brake rod itself. Here is the original hardware right here that I plated um, a couple of videos back now, I believe. This is all original. And then I do have some new hardware, replacement hardware. This is the brake spring, we already, or the brake pedal return spring. Uh, here's another, a little anomaly. This is the brake spring. That was called out on the parts diagram. Here's the original. Notice the difference in length. I could use the original or I could use the new one. I think what I'm going to do is with the, the new spring, which looks to be the right diameter, this is obviously way too long. I think what I'm going to do is try the new one. I'm going to have to cut it off. And uh, if I don't like that, I can go back to the original. But the original isn't in really great shape, even though it's been replated. Most of the rest of this hardware I can reuse because it came out when I plated it pretty good, with the exception of maybe this washer. So when you look at the parts diagram, we have a nut right here that goes onto the, onto the rod. I do have the original rod, uh, nut, by the way, but I chose not to bother with that. So we got this adjustment nut. And then I believe this little washer, now this washer, which is the original, was not called out on the parts diagram. But I believe, looking at my, my photos, it goes on against this washer. That's what my photo showed anyway, so 
a little pleating in the inside ID of the washer. A little build up. I believe the spring will go on, so I'm going to cut this new spring to the same length as the original. Approximately. Now I can't, well I could, but it's not going to be easy. I can't roll the end of that spring like you see here. I could put it on my lathe and twist it up, but I'm not going, I'm not even going to try to do that. I'm going to take a pair of pliers and see if I can just straighten that a little bit. Let's see if we can just. It's spring steel, so it's um, pretty tough stuff. Okay, now we have the spring. And I believe we have that. And then essentially it'll go like this. These two parts will abut up against, I think Yamaha calls this a special nut. And that special nut goes inside of here. Let's go ahead and put that together. Remember, I said I believe this fits like this. So what I'm going to do, put the barrel through. See? And then attach And it'll go something like that. Now in terms of indexing of the arm to the brake rod camshaft right here, it'll all depend, let me take the tape off the brake rod, how much motion you want in that brake rod. And that's designed to allow for wear of your brake shoes. So you can reposition this this cam any way you want. Break this, back this up just a little bit here. So I think positioning that uh, brake cam right there is, is about right, and then I can fine tune the adjustment later. So let's go ahead and finish that up and take this back off. Brake cam on.
So we got the brake rod, three, two, one. So we got the brake arm in its relative position. Just take the nut, uh, lock washer, flat washer, and bolt combination. And we're going to bolt that up. Now this bolt typically would go through this way with a head facing forward. That's the way I've always done it. <clears throat> and that's the way the parts diagrams show it. Now it's just a matter of snugging this uh, nut bolt combination up that holds the brake arm onto the brake shaft cam. This can be repositioned later if I decide that I'm not happy with the positioning of uh, the brake pedal. But I'm just going to snug that up for right now. Like that. Now let's see what this uh, is going to look like when we put everything back together. The, um, the brake return springs inside of the hub here are, have enough tension to pull the brake pedal back up. So I'm going to leave it at that spot right now. If Once I get the bike further along, get the seat on it, can sit on it. If I need to adjust some of this linkage, I can certainly do so. Well, I think I've pretty much got everything done to this point on this side. Off camera, I did install the E-clip. The circlip to hold the brake pedal on so that it doesn't come off. On the other side of the swing arm is a black plastic cap that fits into the uh, hole in the end of the swing arm, the companion hole on the left side here, because there's there's nothing that goes in there, so there's this black round plastic plug that I installed off camera. And the only other thing that's noteworthy is where this linkage for the uh, brake light switch attaches to the rod. <clears throat> I reviewed that off camera a bit and I didn't like the way it was kind of twisting so I moved where this linkage fits over the end of that bent rod. I moved it to the outside of the brake arm rod. I moved it to the outside between the brake arm rod itself and the uh, cotter pin and it seemed to straighten that linkage out. I did that off camera if any of you on this uh, video have some advice for me on that linkage attachment, whether I got it right or wrong now, I would appreciate it because remember this was all a part originally on my bike when I got it. So I don't have any real pictures to work from in terms of when I got the bike and took it apart. So if anyone's got any advice for me, feel free to offer that up regarding that linkage. I'd appreciate hearing from you. Again, I think that's it for this side, or this part of the bike in here. Uh, again, just to reiterate, the brake return spring, brake arm return spring, which goes in this hole, attaches to the muffler, which obviously is not installed yet. Now I'm going to move forward on the bike. Probably are going to start on the top into the engine, um, cylinders, pistons, etc. And might even then get into the carburetors. I'm not sure yet. I'll see. But... And we're going to keep moving our way forward. That's it for this video today, folks. Any comments, questions, drop me a note, especially regarding that linkage down there and how it attaches to the brake rod. Uh, otherwise, as usual, thanks for watching.